You've heard of Psycho, right? At least you should. It's one of the best horror movies ever made. It's one of the best movies from Alfred Hitchcock, a man who had nothing but quality throughout his lengthy career. A movie with a twist so secretive that Hitchcock himself told theater owners to turn anyone away who showed up late. Yeah, I got a lot of respect for this movie, for a variety of reasons. I actually covered it for last year's Scary Mania, if you would like to check that out. So when I learned that there was a sequel to Psycho, I kind of prepared for the worst. 33 years after his rampage, Norman Bates is declared sane by the state and is released back to Bates Motel. He tries desperately to assimilate back into polite society while also dealing with the demons that have been drummed out of him, or so he thinks. Let's get this out of the way right here and now. Psycho is one of the best horror movies ever made, like I mentioned. So anything that comes after it will inevitably be compared to it, sometimes not so favorably. However, mostly due to Anthony Perkinson's performance, the, C the cinematography from Dean Cundey, and the score from Jerry Goldsmith, this movie is so much better than it has any right to be. I'll talk about the stuff I didn't like first, in a bit of a change of pace. What I didn't like was that some of the Psycho references, or the references to the original, were kinda on the nose. There are some subtle ones, like, for example, there's a scene when Norman returns to the hotel, or the motel, for the first time, and he just gets an immediate flush back of all of the memories that he has repressed, and then his briefcase falls down the stairs with all his clothes and everything. Whether this was done intentionally or not, it felt like a callback to when Martin Balsam fell down the stairs after he was stabbed. Then there are other references, like the entire shower scene being replayed as the first scene of the movie. And no, this isn't a recreation either. They literally show it from beginning to end. It's like someone went into the original print of Psycho, made a copy of the shower scene, and put it into the first scene of the movie. It just felt too much like a, see, you remember this, you remember this, when it's only the most, one of the most famous movie scenes in horror history. It's like, like, please. Also, and no spoilers, the other thing that I didn't like was that there was a twist in here that I'm not sure how to feel about. Again, no spoilers, but let's just say it's a, it's a bit out there. It, it's going to depend on how you react to it, that's all I'll say. But with the bad, there is the good, and there was surprisingly a lot to like here, chief among them being Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. He does a really good job here. The last time we see him in this universe is at the end of The Shining, when he looks up and he does the whole grin thing as you see Mother and him basically as a split personality. That's the last image that we see of him, so for him to get a real job and try and try and fix his life. I thought it was a very admirable job, especially on the part of Anthony Perkins, who is Norman Bates. Like, no, no offense to Freddie Highmore, I haven't seen the Bates Motel show, I've heard it's good, but Anthony Perkins is Norman Bates. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Cinematography from Dean Cundey is quite good as well. There are definitely some very unnerving shots. There's a pretty good scene of tension where Norman and and his friend who happens to be a girl from the diner, he, he brings her home just to be nice after she and her boyfriend break up and they have a sandwich together and he knows that there is a knife in the drawer and he's been down that road before and doesn't want to go back so he's like i don't know i i, I don't think i have a knife and then she's like oh well i'll take a look oh here it is and it's this big old michael myers style knife and norman kind of looks at it and it's kind of like he's kind of like flipping back and forth and back and forth and mary's getting nervous and so is he and then he's finally like and then he cuts the sandwich. I'm not doing it justice, it's quite good. And that's all I really feel comfortable talking about because 
this is a movie that I feel is better if you watch it than hearing me talk about it, because I'll leave you all with this. And this may be a reiteration of what I said earlier, but it's true. Psycho is one of the best horror movies ever, so when you're going to create a sequel, it better be good. And it certainly is not bad, but it is a mixed bag. However, when you consider Psycho and consider Psycho 2, Psycho 2 is just far better than it had any right to be.